And finally tonight, NASA's new space telescope has unveiled the deepest look of the cosmos ever captured. The first image was released yesterday during event at the White House, followed by four more shots today. Part of the image is light from not too long after the Big Bang, a theory that was developed by a Catholic priest. The James Webb Space Telescope has been decades in the making. And joining us now to discuss is Bill Oaks, project manager for the James Webb Space Telescope. Bill, welcome back. So great to see you. Um, wow, Thank this you. is really exciting stuff here. Uh, tell us more about the photos that were released this morning. Uh, what are we seeing in these just incredible images? So the, the idea behind these images, they're called early release observations, is the, not so much do science, but demonstrate the capabilities of Webb. Um, I've been telling folks all along, if, if Webb is a, a Lamborghini, we're really still in first gear. You know, we're still learning about it. We're going to you know, push push more and more and get, get ourselves up to fifth gear here over the next few months. Um, so what you're seeing today is a demonstration of some of our different science modes. For example, the deep field image, um, that's the deepest we've ever been able to see. Um, and the exposure length is kind of equivalent of like Hubble did where Hubble took almost two weeks to make that exposure. We spent about five to seven hours making that same exposure. But you could see in that one image that uh, the one galaxy was back 13.1 billion years. So we're seeing light from 13.1 billion years ago. Over the next couple of months, we'll actually see back farther. And eventually we'll get back to about 13.5 billion years. Wow, it's so hard to grasp that too. I mean, it just really is unbelievable. And I understand that we're only getting just a very small window into space through these photos. Uh, Bill, can you tell us a little bit more about the scale of what we're seeing? Sure. Um, I'll start again with the deep field image because I think is the probably the, the best when we start talking scale. So if you wanted to understand what part of the sky um, you were seeing, and, and last night when they revealed that image, they talked about the size of a, a grain of sand. It's not quite that small, but if you took a dime held it up and you saw FDR's face, and then you see FDR's eye. His eye is about the size of the field of view that we looked at, just to see all those galaxies that you saw today, uh, looking looking back in time. Um, so that kind of gives you a sense of scale of, you know, look at just what we're seeing. There was prob there's probably 200, 300 galaxies just in that one picture, maybe even more. Now you know the average size of a galaxy is 100 million to 300 million stars. So now you do that math. And it gets even a huger number with just that part of the sky. Um, the other images that we showed, I think the other amazing one is the uh, exoplanet one, where we looked at this planet around a star that's about the size of our sun. Uh, the planet is about the size of, of, of Saturn with the mass of Jupiter. Um, this particular planet, it trans transitions the entire planet, goes around the entire planet in three days. So it's moving going around that planet. But we saw the signature of water on that planet. Um, so it's water, water vapor, steam, but we saw that signature on that planet. That, that kind of gives you a sense of what um, um, Webb is going to be able to do. Wow. And, you know, you kind of touched on it before, but I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit more about maybe how this telescope uh, differs from other space telescopes like the Hubble. Okay. Yeah, I typically, we talk about Hubble all the time. Um, I think the two main differences are, one, we look at a different part of the light spectrum. So to see the type of things that we saw today, we have to look in the infrared. As, as light travels through the universe, light waves start to elongate. And when they elongate, they go from the visible light that we all see every day into the infrared part of the light spectrum. So that's why it's important for us to be able to look back in time at, in the infrared. So that's one of the big differences with us on Hubble. But the other really is obviously the size. Um, our primary mirror it has seven times the light collecting capability of a Hubble mirror, of a Hubble primary mirror. In addition, the advancements in the detectors and our science instruments combine that with the mirror makes us about 100 times more powerful than the Hubble telescope. And you saw some of that today. Yeah. Wow, incredible. Before I let you go, I know we're running out of time, but I'm curious, Bill, you know, I know when I saw these images, I was just in awe. Curious what you thought when you saw them, and also what's next uh, for the James Webb Space Telescope? It was pretty awe-inspiring. And I, I worked Hubble, 
and I was there after the first servicing mission and we started releasing the images where all the optics correct, collected and they were amazing. But these just blew me away when I saw these, the preview a couple of weeks ago. Then as far as where web goes now, we've now started what's called cycle one. Cycle one is the first year of operations and we know what we're gonna be observing during that time frame. We are now fully into uh, doing those observations. But the next big event is what we call early release science observations. So here's where we actually really do science. And typically on any astronomical mission, a, a scientist and their team will have typically four to six months to analyze that data before it goes public. With our early release science, that, that science data goes out immediately. And some of the things we'll be doing, we'll be doing deeper looks back into the universe. Oh, Bill, thank you so much for your time today. This is also very exciting and can't wait to see what the future holds. Thank you again.